Uh, good afternoon, and uh, we appreciate everybody coming here on uh, Sunday afternoon to be able to update you on uh, the preparations uh, for and uh, recovery efforts from uh, Hurricane uh, Sandy. I'm joined by uh, all the leaders of our public safety uh, team, our National Guard, a number of our cabinet members uh, who can answer questions. We'll have a couple presentations here. Uh, at this point, uh, from the 2 p.m. National Weather Service uh, forecast, the storm track is, uh, as uh, most of the models are, are predicting, it's moving uh, northeast at about 14 miles an hour and still the projected landfall in uh, central New Jersey sometime around uh, 2 a.m. or so on, um, on Tuesday morning. So the effects uh, that we've been planning for for about, uh, about 48 hours are still in effect, and that is uh, heavy wind, uh, rain, uh, and uh, moderate to uh, severe flooding all along the uh, eastern part of, uh, of the state. Uh, right now the projections are uh, Hampton Roads uh, area, uh, five to seven inches of rain, sustained winds of 40 to 45 miles an hour, and gusts to near hur hurricane force, 60 miles uh, uh, and uh, over. Eastern shore, eight to 10 inches of rain with sustained winds of 40 to 45 and gusts of 60 or higher. Uh, the peninsula, uh, it'll be five to eight inches of rain with 35 to 45 mile an hour winds. And then the I-95 quarter, including central Virginia, we're expecting up to six inches of rain in places with uh, sustained winds of 30 and gusts of uh, 45 uh, to 55. And so what's uh, critically important to remember, this is going to be a long event. Uh, it's already started, it's started uh, 24 hours plus in Hampton Roads. The rain bounds are now uh, just about hitting central Virginia. Uh, so there's going to be 48 hours plus of, uh, of rain, uh, he heavy wind. And so uh, the biggest problem that we face is uh, down trees, down power lines, uh, tidal flooding that poses uh, the greatest risk to, to public, uh, public safety. Uh, we're expecting uh, significant power outages. The good news at this point is while 20,000 people have been without power at some point right now, only 3,000. Uh, do not have power, and I appreciate what Dominion has done. They've been uh, incredibly um, responsive. They've uh, got commitments now for over 2,000 uh, uh, employees from other companies, from other states to come in and support us in Virginia. We are uh, hoping that uh, they will secure more uh, as the need occurs, but uh, at this point the power outages have been relatively minimal, but we're just at the early stages of the storm. so. Uh, much more widespread outages are uh, expected, especially in the eastern part, uh, eastern part of the state. Now, as you know, I declared in a, a state of emergency and issued uh, an order uh, about 48 hours ago uh, on Friday morning. Uh, since that time, numerous localities all over the state have also issued their local uh, emergency evacuation orders, in fact, about 25 jurisdictions. At this point, uh, uh, there are three uh, localities that have issued local evacuation orders. That's one of the bits of authority that they were given in my emergency order. Uh, parts of Northampton County, Matthews County, and Tangier Island have issued mandatory evacuation orders. Others have voluntary evacuations in low-lying areas. We're expecting that number to go up as the storm, uh, as the storm uh, approaches. There are numerous shelters currently open, about 30 in total, and we expect that number uh, to go up as power outages uh, increase. Now, we've had several uh, contacts with our state and local uh, officials. The coordination is very good. We just finished a briefing with the president and uh, other governors and, and mayors. The president was on the phone with all of us for about 15 minutes uh, with, uh, Kim, uh, with um, FEMA Director uh, Fugate and other leaders of his administration. Uh, and we do have uh, uh, representatives of FEMA on the ground. Don, where's Don? Oh, right here behind me. FEMA's represented. They've been uh, doing a great job the last two years working with us and preparing for these um, uh, these emergencies. Commissioner, our, our director Fugate has actually called us twice uh, to check in with us to see what uh, what we need. Unlike some other states, Virginia would not apply for nor qualify for a pre-landfall declaration, uh, but we anticipate um, as soon as possible doing our damage assessments and making an application if needed for uh, public assistance, and uh, we hope to do that uh, very, uh, very soon. Uh, our administration, I personally have talked to a number of the local government leaders in Northampton, 
in Chincoteague and Virginia Beach and others just to be sure that they felt that they had everything that they needed. And so far, uh, I think they're as well prepared as we could uh, possibly, um, uh, possibly uh, be. So let me give you an update just on a couple issues, uh, and then I'm going to have a presentation from Michael Klein at VDEM and our uh, leaders from uh, both uh, VDOT and from uh, Dominion Power. At this point, uh, there are several traffic impacts. Uh, the Jamestown Scotland Ferry is at reduced capacity uh, at this point. The uh, Midtown Tunnel in Norfolk and Portsmouth is currently open, although we are concerned that uh, at some point, uh, either because of flooding or because of uh, winds hitting 45 miles an hour, that that uh, artery may be uh, affected. The Bay Bridge Tunnel is currently uh, operating with level two wind restrictions. That means cars only, no trucks. And again, if we get to 45 mile an hour sustained winds in any of those areas down there, those bridges uh, will be uh, will be closed, but at this point they're still passable for all automobile uh, traffic. I'd like to ask the listeners once again and, the, and your, your viewers and readers to please use the Traffic Information Network, uh, 511 uh, on the phone. We'll give all the traffic information or their website, www.511virginia.org. Uh, we'll give any traffic information, and then there, is m there are multiple data points available on readyvirginia.gov, www.readyvirginia.gov. There's a lot of information about preparedness and response and other uh, things of that, uh, of that nature. The, uh, the things that we ask residents to do now, of course, first and foremost, is if there are any final preparations that they need to do, please make them uh, right now. As I mentioned, the, uh, the outer bands of the storm have been in Hampton Roads now for 24 hours. They're starting to approach central Virginia and the larger areas of the Commonwealth will be affected. In fact, virtually all areas of the Commonwealth will be affected over the next, uh, over the next 48 hours. We urge people to stay tuned to local TV, radio. Please have a transistor radio so you can continue to listen and monitor conditions if you uh, lose power. Please know where your shelters are. Those are all set up by local governments. There are 30 of them available now uh, in Chincoteague, Colonial Heights, Hampton, Lancaster, Matthews, Norfolk, Northumberland, Portsmouth and Surrey County, all of those locations have shelters open now. More will be open, all set by local governments. So please contact your local government officials or go to their websites, better yet, and they can tell you where these shelters uh, are. We remind people, once again, if you lose power, don't use, uh, don't use candles. Uh, remember, uh, generators should be kept outside. Carbon monoxide is a silent killer, always responsible for problems. Keep those generators outside and uh, make sure that you keep your refrigerator and freezers closed if you're hoping to sustain uh, your food sources for any appreciable period of time. And again, we just ask people to continue to, um, to work together. So let me tell you a couple things that are ongoing right now that I think will be important to, uh, to, uh, to our people. The emergency operations centers have been open now for 48 hours. There are numerous centers, about 25 open all over the state that are coordinating regularly with our state operations center about any need that they may that they may have uh, the virginia state police have um, significantly uh, beefed up their personnel colonel flaherty's got uh, literally every trooper in the state on standby they've been numerous uh, troopers pre-deployed to the eastern shore in southeast virginia as well as calling up the um, state police uh, swift water rescue teams they're on standby for those areas of high water we're just beginning to see some minor flooding in the Hampton Roads area. We're very concerned about the ponding of water on roads, which will no doubt cause problems with hydroplaning. Uh, that is just beginning as the heavy rains begin to enter uh, the area. The National Guard uh, has uh, been called up 415 at this time. I've just authorized uh, a limit now up to from 500 up to 750. And General Long, who's here with us, is in the process of uh, activating another 150 to 200 uh, people. Uh, especially now to help in uh, Northern Virginia, where we expect perhaps the longest uh, impacts of the storm into Tuesday night and even uh, and even Wednesday. Department of uh, Health is uh, coordinating uh, regularly with uh, local hospitals about any of their needs. Uh, they are at the very top of the list for restoration of power. Secretary Hazel, who's here with me, has been in regular contact uh, with them. Department of Transportation crews now are dispatched uh, in all relevant areas. They're working 12-hour shifts. 
throughout the state. I can tell you the last storm that we saw, Greg, there were many of those uh, folks that were working uh, as much as 24 or 32 hours that I personally uh, got to talk to. They're an amazing group of people, and they are going to stay on as long as necessary to work with the Guard and the state police to clear debris and to uh, monitor road traffic. As I mentioned, uh, FEMA uh, has uh, been here now uh, for some time, and uh, we expect a very good cooperation with them as we make our uh, applications for help to the federal government. Uh, in the conversation with President Obama, he indicated that at 5 p.m. today that the federal government will make a decision about whether the federal government will be open or closed uh, tomorrow. We'll make a, a decision shortly after that about uh, state offices. We have already implemented as of Friday a liberal leave policy and telecommuting policies, meaning that all non-essential personnel that can actually work from home uh, will uh, do so. Uh, we will make sure that our top priority will be public safety and making sure that uh, our state employees that don't have to come in won't come in because tomorrow is going to be the worst day of the storm and, and into Tuesday for most uh, areas of uh, the state. We already have multiple closings of schools, of public offices, of colleges and universities. Too long to mention, but again, we ask the residents to please uh, look at the websites, uh, look at uh, uh, readyvirginia.org, and there will be multiple listings of all the, of all the closures. Uh, we're very concerned, obviously, about pre preparing for an election that's just uh, nine days uh, away now. And uh, Don Palmer from our State Board of Elections is here. Uh, they've got a number of contingency plans in place. Uh, I've directed the Secretary to be sure that under uh, as many circumstances as possible that are safe, that our registrar's office stay open so that people that are authorized legally to cast absentee ballots in person in advance can do so. As you know, we don't have early voting, but we have a lot of people that take advantage of that. Uh, and to the maximum de degree possible, if local registrar's offices are closed, that we will have supplemental times in the evening or even the weekend to make up for that. So um, the Secretary Palmer and his team are taking a look at that because we want everyone to uh, have an opportunity uh, to vote. I I'm, uh, appreciate uh, Governor Romney's uh, work in canceling the events today. He called me yesterday uh, to get the full report, and they decided to cancel the, all three of the events today. Uh, the president's doing the same tomorrow. I appreciate the candidates working with us so that uh, there's no interruption with our law enforcement team uh, with any of the priorities, and that is to get ready for and to prepare for and to react to uh, this storm. So there are a number of resources, and I'll conclude with this, um, that our citizens can use. One is using 211, which is toll-free information on a number of aspects related to the storm that will provide relevant and updated information about many of the things that I've covered already. Uh, VAemergency.gov is a place to go online uh, with your smartphone for statewide storm updates. Uh, the Twitter feed of at VDEM, at VDEM, will uh, give regular updates uh, from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management. Uh, we have a Facebook page for the Department of Emergency Management at VA Emergency. And then, as I mentioned, the 511 uh, line can be called for uh, the most recent traffic updates, uh, which people should use because we very well may have some uh, closures, especially in the Hampton Roads area, as the winds and the ponding of water uh, pick up. So the final word <laughs> to our residents is this is going to be a long haul. Uh, we will no doubt have uh, rain and high winds through Tuesday in northern Virginia. There could be uh, significant winds still and rain into, uh, into Wednesday morning, depending on the exact uh, track of the storm. People are going to have to be patient. Be a good neighbor. Know right now where your shelters are. Know who you can go to if, in fact, you have uh, a power outage. The unique part of this storm is unlike any storm that I've seen in uh, my 20 years in office is that the back end of the storm is cold and in the western part of the state snow. The National Weather Service has predicted up to one to four inches of snow in south side and southwest of Virginia, higher amounts in the higher elevations. And so it's a very unique weather event uh, this late in the season for the people of Virginia. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Michael Klein, our head of the Department of Emergency Management, if he will come forward and give some further updates. Michael. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, 
As the governor has mentioned, the uh, Virginia EOC and the VERT, the Virginia Emergency Response Team, which is comprised of about 20-some key state agencies that have response uh, capabilities and recovery capabilities, are volunteer partners, our private sector partners, including the infrastructure uh, providers, are all coordinating, are in place. Uh, many of them are right here in the EOC today. We'll continue working through the storm. Uh, the agencies and those partners who have field deployable resources are in place. Um, they've gone ahead of the bridge closings, the places where we could anticipate that something might be required, and we've put those people in place so that they'll already be there if they're needed. Uh, beyond that, we'll continue to work uh, storm events in close coordination with our localities. Uh, if they exceed their resources, they come to the State Emergency Operations Center through a couple of different systems uh, and some redundant systems. So we're pretty sure that if they need help, they can ask and we'll respond uh, as quickly as is possible. Um, uh, the governor's already mentioned uh, folks like State Police, the National Guard, forestry, transportation, health, um, uh, Department of Social Services who works with the localities on, on uh, shelter resources. All of those folks are in place and providing coordination to uh, deal with this storm. Uh, in addition, we have uh, an IMAT team, an advanced team from the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency and from the Department of Defense uh, and from the Coast Guard. All those folks are in place here at the Emergency Operations Center and able to go back to their resources and pull them into play if they're called upon for the storm. Um, the final thing I will say, uh, the governor said this a couple of times, but this is a unique event. Uh, we really don't know what the impacts are going to be of four days of high winds and heavy rain and the wind changing direction. Most of the time with a hurricane, it blows through and most of your winds are from one primary direction. It's going to be very different this time. So folks need to be prepared, but also to be aware of their situation, of the changing situations, the changing impacts of the storm. And obviously, if, if, you know, if you're well prepared, try to take care of your neighbors too. If you see someone who needs some help, uh, do the best you can for it and be good neighbors. Uh, that's what I have, Governor. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Michael. Next, uh, Greg Worley, Commissioner of VDOT. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. As the Governor mentioned, we have over a thousand uh, men and women with the crews uh, and equipment uh, staged st strategically throughout the Commonwealth to address any event that, uh, any situation that we need to deal with. But more importantly, my message to you today is limit your travel on the roadways until this, this weather has passed. We don't want you out there in the conditions that's going to be coming up. You can expect that there's going to be flooding on some of our roadways. And when you have water that's ponding on the highways, that's, that's a case where you may have hydroplaning. You're going to come to situations where you may not have any power at some of our signals. Please treat those as a four-way stop. That's, that's critical. And if you see just water or flooded road, please do not try to go through that. That's not a safe condition. And if you're out and you see something that needs to be reported to us, please use 1-800-4-F-O-R-ROAD, R-O-A-D, and report any condition and we will address it. At this point, the storm is in Hampton Roads area and we're having continued rain and high winds. At this point, there are no facilities closed uh, in the Hampton Roads area, but statewide, we do have about 12 roads, secondary roads, that are closed because of flooding. We have several roads, maybe 15, that are on watch because of standing water. So again, please be careful. We have the men and women out on the highway uh, to address these conditions. And I urge you, again, to limit your travels because if you're not out there, it's easier for us to make the road safe for you. Thank you very much. Well said, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, and finally, Rodney Blevins uh, from uh, Dominion will give us an update on power. Thank you, Governor. Storm-related storm outages have already started to occur, and we are staying on top of the repairs. Our crews are in the field and working. As the Governor stated, 
We've had 20,000 customers experience a power outage since 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Most in the Hampton Roads area experiencing the early effects of this system. 17,000 have been restored and we are working to continue to keep up with outage activity as it comes in. Uh, we certainly expect the weather conditions to continue to deteriorate um, and we will continue to have crews in the field assessing damage and making repairs as it is safe to work. We're in the field and working right now and we'll continue to do so as long as it's safe for them to work. Very important at this point to have our phone number close at hand should your power go out or you see a down power line. That phone number is 1-866-DOM-HELP or 1-866-366-4357 or with your computer or, or smartphone uh, you can go to www.dom.com to get the information or report your power out on your smartphone. The additional crews that the governor mentioned are arriving from out of state. They will be receiving a training on their safety procedures and assigned work to locations, and we will continue to pursue getting more. Thank you. That's all. Well, that's our update, and I guess uh, in summary, I, I want to assure the people of Virginia this is an outstanding public safety and preparedness team. We've learned a lot with every event, and we've had a lot of them over the last three years. Uh, we are uh, well prepared. Uh, the city, state, federal co cooperation is the best uh, that I've uh, seen it by, as evidenced by all the people that are here on the ground. But, but at the end of the day, uh, it's going to take the uh, good work and common sense of our citizens to make sure we stay safe. I think there are a couple certainties. One, it's going to get a lot worse than it is right now over the next uh, couple of days, particularly in Northern Virginia, uh, where the big impacts will be uh, Monday, Tuesday, and even into uh, Wednesday. So if uh, people are going to work, rush hour is going to be uh, a dangerous time. Uh, secondly, that there are things that can be done, uh, final preparations, even, uh, even the early this afternoon before uh, the storm uh, arrives. Uh, people are going to have to be patient. People are going to have to stay informed, looking for the sources of information so they can be updated, knowing where shelters are. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about being a good neighbor, using common sense, staying uh, inside during the storms. We are going to have power outages. There are going to be downed trees. Uh, and that's the biggest cause of uh, injury and fatalities is people getting near electrical wires or being in an area where a tree uh, hits the hits the car. So uh, please uh, use common sense. Uh, we've got uh, massive amounts of help that are being deployed in the public and private sector. People are prepared. And uh, if everybody is patient and be, uh, is a good neighbor, uh, we will get through this very well. So with that, we've got all our team here. We'll be glad to answer uh, questions. Shall you? Well, the way the storm seems to be tracking up uh, the coast, there is already a uh, rain and, uh, and, and winds being felt almost all the way up uh, the seaboard. You can see even in New Jersey and Delaware there are, there are impacts uh, now. But the fact that it is tracking up the coast and then turning into the coast uh, puts the uh, center of the storm actually uh, closer to northern Virginia a couple days from now than it is, uh, it, it is today or tomorrow morning. It's just uh, odd the way it's taken that uh, quick left hook into the Delaware Bay and uh, into New Jersey. And so that wraparound effect of the backside of the storm is going to create uh, significant uh, additional impacts as the storm lifts northward and, north, uh, northern, uh, and then kind of stalls out just a little bit. There's uh, looks like the heaviest rains will be more sustained in northern Virginia for uh, a, longer, uh, a longer period of time. So uh, that's why I think Colonel Flaherty and General Long are making sure that they've got resources up there as well, not just uh, at, the, at the coast, and uh, that we are as prepared as we can be for um, a more prolonged uh, impact in Northern Virginia. Is there a time in which final preparations should be completed by? Yesterday. <laughs> uh, today is not good. I mean, obviously, the bigger impacts right now are 95 east. They're going to continue to spread. As I mentioned, uh, the bigger impacts for south side, southeast, southwest, and western Virginia are going to actually be Tuesday as the wrap around effects of the storm mixing with that uh, cold weather, uh, that, that cold front come through and uh, create um, some hazardous conditions. One, one of the things we've told people is they've got to prepare now for blankets, uh, not fans uh, afterwards because 
if you're looking at lows in the 40s and 30s, which seems to be what we're going to have Tuesday night and Wednesday night in virtually every area of the state. If you don't have power, your, your concern and your threat is going to be cold and hypothermia, not, not heat exhaustion, just the opposite of what we had in earlier storms uh, this year and last. Uh, so I, I do think uh, all the, of those factors are being evaluated by Secretary Hazel and by our law enforcement uh, personnel, but uh, I just think that if uh, you haven't made those last preparations, particularly for water, food, battery, battery radios and the like, uh, there's probably still some time if you're north and east of uh, 6495 uh, to do that uh, today, but uh, our greatest concern is pe keeping people off the road tomorrow and Tuesday during the height of the storm. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of a two-part question. First, can, what do you say to folks who aren't uh, sort of ma most of the folks out in the, in the coast, some of them aren't necessarily heeding the warnings um, to, to be prepared or not taking this as seriously as, as everybody's saying. What do you say to those folks? And as part of that, can you sort of give people throughout the state a timeline of, of what they can expect and when? I know it's a fluid situation, but sure. Any well, uh, from all the National Weather Service updates, and we're getting them regularly. They uh, put out uh, new advisories every every two hours. Uh, they they have gotten so good though, is that the information we had 48 hours ago is virtually unchanged because the models that they've put together have all you know pretty much converged 48 hours ago on on a track and by that track and the storm strength and intensity they were able to predict uh, pretty carefully what the winds the floods uh, the, the, the flooding uh, and the rain amounts would be that really hasn't changed much and so people have had a while to understand what those are going to be I think the people are living along the coast especially on the eastern shore, uh, need to be very concerned about, uh, about storm surge, which uh, might be uh, close to or, or near what we had with, uh, with Irene. Uh, the waves are predicted to be, I believe, six to nine feet in the bay and 10 to 15 feet in the Atlantic. I've already gotten uh, pictures afforded me from Virginia Beach where the beach is basically uh, covered with water. The tide tide's already up to the, uh, the boardwalk. So, uh, people that living at or near the ocean front need to realize that uh, the threat of high water and flooding combined with no power means that they need to have an alternative plan. They need to know where they're going to go if the electricity goes out and it's 40 degrees on, uh, on Monday night or Tuesday night. Uh, it is a, a serious situation and it's not going to abate in 24, 36 hours like a lot of the storms have where they blow through and then it's over. This is going to be a protracted event, which means a lot of patience. Uh, Dominion and uh, the rest of the team are going to be out there, but uh, we have to be concerned about the safety of those workers and uh, in terms of getting the getting uh, power restored. So like all these storms, there are unpredictable acts of, uh, of nature. We've got uh, the best data that we can from the National Weather Service, and based on that data, we're deploying uh, more than sufficient resources in both law enforcement and health and others uh, to those areas. But at the end of the day, if people don't make good, wise, common sense decisions on their own, uh, they invite uh, unnecessary risk. So we ask everybody to follow the, heat, uh, the warnings of their local governments when it comes to mandatory evacuation, and uh, especially if they've been given the opportunity to not travel the next two days because of telecommuting, uh, please don't go out on the roads because that's our biggest concern is multiple uh, accidents due to ponding of water, down trees, down power lines. These are going to create some pretty hazardous conditions uh, for the next three or four days in our state. Yes, uh, Mike. Clar clarification on the shelters. These are local shelters that the DSS, the local DSS offices are, are staffing with help from uh, the state health departments, state DSS. And I understand <coughs> that, that some three dozen people are already in the Northampton shelter. Do we have any updates on? How many people are actually in shelters? Well, I can tell you, Mike, what we know so far is about, I believe, about 30 shelters open in those uh, 10 jurisdictions that I mentioned. Uh, shelters are, uh, uh, are solely determined by the local governments. We work with them in the, in the calm periods to be able to help them to make sure they've got enough and secure locations. But which exact ones and what time they open are solely up to the local governments. And so that's why they maintain those local websites. There'll be plenty of information on the radio. TV about where those shelters are, but again, I can't stress enough, the time to know that is now, because you may not have power to find out later on, so the residents need to learn where that shelter is, so if they 
having a mandatory evacuation or they lose power or have a tree through their, uh, their roof that they know exactly uh, where to go.